Welcome on into the Wolverine.com podcast. Clayton Safey here with Chris Ballas and Anthony Broom. Uh, breaking some stuff down here before Memorial Weekend, heading into the summer. Michigan football 100 days until kickoff September 3rd against Colorado State. So uh, enjoy the summer, but football is coming for sure. Um, we'll start with basketball, though. Uh, we have less than a week until that June 1 deadline where both Musa Diabate and Caleb Houston will have to decide whether they're going to stay in the draft, which is June 23rd, or come back to Michigan. They have until 11.59 p.m. that night, and the way these guys are and how quiet they are and not active on social media, I wouldn't be totally shocked if they go right to uh, to the last second there. But Musa Diabate with an impressive combine. Anthony and I talked a little bit about that last week, but he continued to to impress throughout the end of the week in scrimmage work. Uh, Caleb declined his combine invite, but he's been pegged as kind of a late first round, early second guy in some mock drafts. So kind of an interesting situation with him. But Chris, I'll start with you. Just your thoughts here with less than a week until the deadline. That it's too quiet and it's weird, right? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it was the same thing when, when Caleb Houston was declaring for the draft. Nobody knew until hours after the deadline. So usually there's a leak, right? And uh, we're like, okay, did he declare? Did he not? So, uh, and these guys just don't like the spotlight. And talking to people close to them, they're like, okay, so what? You know, it, it's not everybody's business. Not everybody has to know what he's thinking at every second of the day just because the internet says so or people on the internet say so. So, uh, I, I respect that in a way. Uh, at the same time, I hope that they are keeping the Michigan coaches in the loop because they still have to build a roster, fellas. And if you are down two guys, Musa Diabate and Caleb Houston. Then you're going back to the portal, or then you're going to a maybe a late addition. Remember Muhammad Abdul, uh, uh, Ali Abdur Rahman, you know, late in the process, things like that, where uh, maybe you find somebody. So, um, to me, <clears throat> it is what it is, and it's just the, the nature of the beast in college basketball these days in recruiting. So, uh, I I believe uh, at least one of them will go. I've said all along I thought Musa Diabate would be the more more likely. Uh, and from what we were told a while back, if he was going to be a top 20 pick, then Caleb Houston was going to go. Uh, I don't see that happening. Honestly, I don't see him being a first round pick, no matter what's being written. Uh, I think that would be a stretch at this point. So, I mean, if he were, it would be one thing if he were a freak athlete, but he's not. He still has some work to do, fellas. So uh, I'd be surprised, still somewhat surprised if Caleb Houston left. Uh, not so surprised if Musa Diabate did. Yeah, that's more or less where I where I stand on it. I mean, I, we we've kind of talked about it a lot because there hasn't been information on these guys other than you know what gets reported through you know the Jonathan the Jonathan Javonis of ESPN or some of these guys behind the scenes. Um, at this point, given that we are so close and there hasn't been, I mean, normally like Chris, even like on our board, there would be oh so and so might be working on something behind the scenes to convince them to come back. There's been none of that stuff, so. I think that you know, Michigan is probably as in the dark on this as, as probably we are. It doesn't really seem like there's been a lot of movement either way, other than the momentum that it does seem like both of those guys are going to stay in. So, and I, I realize there's inherently some frustration in that from the fan base, because we didn't see those guys as finished products at Michigan. Um, but if it's, if they are their version, if they were, the version of those players that are potentially leaving out the door now, um, I think they can get something that approximates that from the guys that are coming in next year. So I don't want to say it's not a big deal, but at this point, I mean, the writing is kind of on the wall. And I think that Michigan, um, if they have two spots open, I think that probably is at least some sort of guard depth or shooting that they need to go address through the portal or whether it's a late bloomer of a recruit that's still out there. But I think that there's a pretty clear direction this is headed. And I'll say one thing, one more thing, Clay. We did have an impeccable source that told us that Caleb was going into the or was invited to the combine, the NBA draft combine, but they only want to say so much, clearly, because they've clammed up since and have not told us what's going on one way or the other. So um, it's kind of controlled. The, the narrative's being controlled a little bit, and that's fine. I don't have any problem with that. And uh, we're just appreciative to get any information that we can. Uh, and again, hopeful that the, the coaches are in the loop at this point. Definitely. And it's a it's a tough process for, you know, some of these guys that aren't necessarily the surefire first round picks. It's a lot of PR type of thing. Uh, you know, obviously we've seen it throughout the years, especially it's more so top picks. But you have guys that sit out the combine. Houston obviously was playing some sort of strategy there because he's healthy by all accounts. When you see the, some workout videos that he's doing uh, out in Las Vegas and things like that. So 
And and I said this last year when Hunter Dickinson entered the process as well. Like if you're going to go through this whole deal, you probably should do it as if you're going to leave uh, and, and operate as if you're going to be gone. Obviously, you, you do things with the agents and, and all that that you can retain your eligibility if you're in the air. But I don't blame these guys for doing making strategic moves, doing what they can to make sure their stock is as high as it possibly can be. Um that's what makes Caleb in Houston's very interesting. Anthony and I talked about it last week again, but it was like you, you look at what he did with sitting out and then you see a little bit of the buzz where he's now popping up on the mock drafts. Is that maybe some guys with mock drafts guessing that, Oh, maybe he does have a guarantee and maybe they were trying to, to do this. And then at the end of the day, if they don't get a guarantee, he comes back. I still think at least one will go. I agree with both of you guys. Both are trending that they're going to go individually, but I do feel like we're going to have a, a quote unquote surprise that one of them will return. It might be Caleb Houston, but again, that's just kind of like a hunch for me at this point. Um, and it's going to be really interesting to see how it plays out. The outlook of this team, I think, is much different depending on what Caleb Houston does, especially Musa Diabate. I think even if he goes, they'll be fine because of Hunter Dickinson coming back. But that wing looks a, a hell of a lot different with him there than it does without him. And, and Musa Diabati made it clear that I am approaching this as though I'm going. He actually said that in his interviews, some of his interviews. So with the Big Ten Network and everything else, he said, I think you have to do that. Otherwise, teams aren't going to take you seriously. So how are teams going to take Caleb Houston seriously when he chooses not to you know, go to the draft combine? Unless he's got that one team that makes a promise. But we've seen this before, guys. Hey, you're our guy until you're not, You know, until somebody slips down and takes your spot. It takes a lot of trust there, and that's a risk. There's no question about it. So uh, is it a risk for Caleb Houston to come back? Uh, absolutely not. Now, if he'd had a really good year, then I would say yes. You know, you look at Glenn Robinson the third back in the day, probably lost, you know, several spots in the draft when he could have been a first-rounder based on potential, came back, didn't show great improvement, showed some, uh, but he was kind of still the same player, uh, scored a few more points, but he was still a residual guy, which he's always been his entire career. So – I think Caleb Houston, if he comes back and shows that he can shoot on the road, he can do a little bit more with the ball in the ball screen, uh, because let's be honest, he struggled in that area this year a lot more than people expected him to, then I think he has a chance to improve his draft stock. So um, to me, it's a stretch to go from, okay, I'm only going to go if I'm a top 20 pick, to all of a sudden I'm going to go if I get any offer whatsoever. That's why I think that Caleb Houston might be coming back. Again, I would agree with all that. It's... Like I said before, right now, based on what we saw last season, I don't see it, but there might be teams out there if he does have some sort of guarantee, or maybe it's not a guarantee. Maybe it's a guarantee from his agents or basketball people that, hey, if you stay in, like we think that someone will see that you were a five-star in high school and they will want to get their hands on that. But based on the film from last year, like I said, I think another year, you know, of the two, like like I said, we've, we've talked about this ad nauseum at this point. Like of the two, I think that Musa is probably the more – ready for the league just because of how special he is physically and athletically. But you know, Clayton, I'm with you too. Like if Caleb Houston comes back to Michigan, all of a sudden, you know, as opposed to, I think the biggest position of strength, this roster could potentially be in is if, you know, you're looking for where jet Howard's role can be as opposed to, well, we need him to play here or he has to play the two now. Cause we're not deep uh, in this area. So, I would still like to see Caleb. I would love to see them both come back. I don't think that's realistic. I, the chances of one coming back, I guess they're still out there because it is. it just has been so quiet. But, um, you know, you're right, Chris. It has been very strategic in terms of what's been placed out there and who's been told what and what's been reported. Um, we're barreling towards this deadline. I think as of today, we're, what, five days away from it. So we're going to know soon. Um, I think a lot of times when there's uncertainty, people start to get, you know, get worried that, bad news is, is on the way, but maybe it means good news is on the way the longer that it goes. And let's be abundantly clear here. Neither one of these guys is anywhere near ready for the NBA. And they aren't going to come in and make, and maybe somebody makes a roster at the end of the bench, more than likely they're playing in the G league if they decide to leave and learning. Uh, and there's something to be said for hands-on basketball all the time, rather than just going through uh, classes and then part-time basketball. Even though these guys live in the gym, I was talking to Phil Martelli, Michigan's assistant, a few weeks ago, and he said, you know what, these kids are in the gym all the time in their spare time. He said, you know, it's almost to the point where you want to tell them, you know, go have a little bit more of a social life. That's how dedicated they are. Uh, but he said it's also up to them to make sure that they are accomplishing something in the gym. And 
a couple of those guys, you know, they're in their shooting and, you know, they might, might spend four hours in the gym, but maybe one only one of those hours is really, really productive time on things that they need to be working on. So that's something I think they'll be working on with these guys uh, if they come back, if and when they come back and the guys that are coming back anyway. So, but I will say this, they've got very high character kids. They've got gym rats, all these guys uh, care about team success in, in addition to individual success. So they're recruiting the right kinds of kids. No doubt. Um, anything else on the hoop side before we move over to football? For either no, I, it'll be interesting though to see what happens in the portal if these one or one of these two guys. True. From what we've heard, guys, they're still looking at some guys, and Imani Bates isn't doing anything until he finds out what happens with Caleb Houston. Is what we've heard. No matter what Michigan is doing with him, and again, if impeccable sources close to Michigan have told him, they've, they've said, "Look, we are full, you know, and uh, you know we probably aren't going to pursue this that type of thing." But Hey, say you lose both of these guys, and Imani Bates is the guy out there, and you need some help. You know, do you, do you roll the dice on him? It would be hard to blame Juwan Howard, no matter what effect we think he might have on the culture of this program, given some of the baggage that he's carried with him the last several uh, years. Let's put it yeah. that way to put it. The the baggage is what I'm worried about. I I feel like everyone kind of rags on Imani. He's probably a good kid. I I just think that there's a lot that comes with Imani Bates. Um, even if you were, I was at eight or nine scholarships, I might just tell him we're full, but, uh, again, nothing <laughs> personal against him. It's just kind of the way, I mean, I saw what played out last year at Memphis. We saw kind of the circus that was, uh, the end of the high school career there. So, but again, nothing against him personally, but, uh, it'll, it'll be very interesting to see how it plays out and we'll see what Jalen Llewellyn is as a point guard too, moving up from the Ivy league to the big 10. I think that's a big storyline, something we can't overlook, right? I mean, yep. there's been hit and misses. Uh, especially when it comes to guys coming from mid-majors. We're seeing it more. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how those guys kind of pan out at their new spots. Um, before we move to football, we do have a Manscaped product alert. That's our great sponsor from Manscaped. So you can insert your siren here. Uh, you ask for it and they listen. Our friends at Manscaped just brought back the Ultra Smooth Package. It's time to stop, drop, and order this premium shaving kit. Everyone knows by now that the Lawnmower 4.0 is the best electric shave for your balls. But if you're looking for a closer shave to go bare down there, then the Ultra Smooth Package is the perfect set. It's time to shave that bush of yours and get right to the roots with a discount just for you. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the promo code 20GOBLUE, 20GOBLUE. Uh, again, 20% off and free shipping over there. Fellas, I believe our ultra smooth package is coming, but the lawnmower 4.0 is fantastic. All the products, the shampoo, the body spray, the underwear, the t-shirts that I know Chris rocks every now and then uh, are all fantastic. Love them. Uh, that's a great product. And uh, you know what? We aren't going to endorse something that we don't believe in. That's just the way we are. So uh, it's been great. You know, you hear it. And when you, when you initially hear it and you're like, well, you know, they're going to do what these guys are, what then you read the ads, you know, and these guys are, they do this on purpose to screw with us. Like Doug Skeen said, uh, I love it though. It's been a great product for me uh, and millions and millions of people would uh, agree. People who are not paid to promote the product. Yeah, when we first started doing the reads, it was 3 million men worldwide. Now it's up to four, so that's yeah. some big growth. And I would credit most of that to our ads. So uh, there you go. Yeah, I mean, I'm <laughs> not going to – yeah, why would I admit elsewhere uh, otherwise? So uh, there you go. Support Manscaped, 20 Go Blues, the promo code there. You can also find it in the bio to the YouTube here. Um, let's talk some football. Chris, a, you were at the Mega Camp on Sunday. J.J. McCarthy, his family holding that camp out near Chicago, where he's from, about 20-plus of his teammates there as well. Uh, and, you know, from what you were saying, from, you know, what I read from you and all of that, it just sounds like uh, it was a super cool thing, obviously, with a ton of kids coming, different age groups, and this team just kind of being connected. But uh, I'll just throw it to you open-ended in terms of what you learned there and, and what you most took away. Lots of things. First of all, the engagement with the kids and how – engaged they were about Michigan uh, these were a bunch of Michigan fans there and they were chanting it's great to be a Michigan Wolverine you saw him jumping up and down AJ Henning's a, a born leader uh, I'm telling you and he said he's going to be a coach someday I said you could be a coach the way that he interacted with those kids uh, but just down to earth guys one of our colleagues told me once the difference between Michigan and some of the other teams in the Big Ten that, sh that he covered uh, were it was uh, night and day, you know, and and that's, you know, it is what it is. You can call it the Michigan difference, whatever, but these guys were hands-on, uh, first class. Felt bad for J.J. McCarthy, man. That kid cannot move 
without being cornered by somebody. And of course, we were trying to corner him for, for interviews as well. But what we picked up there is that his arm is progressing. Uh, it's getting better. As we reported, the, the you know the initial X-rays they were considering surgery, and uh, uh, it was headed that way before the doctors got sec- they got several other looks. Uh, and when they saw him in person, they said, "No, you don't have to do it. Uh, do this." So here's hoping, guys, that that's the uh, the right thing because uh, they're going to need both quarterbacks. Let's be honest; uh, their guys get banged up. We saw Cade McNamara get banged up in the Michigan State game. Uh, we, we can go back through the years. Chad Henney, you know, right down the list. Devin Gardner, Denard Robinson. You need more than one. And you've got two really good ones, in my opinion. I think J.J. McCarthy's a future star, so hopefully he's 100%. But uh, listening to those guys talk about, we asked these guys, we asked Trevor Keegan, Zach Zinner, the guards, about the quarterback competition. They did not want to bite. They just said, we got two good quarterbacks. You know, they're like, oh, man, I'm not touching that, you know, because they understand. Uh, like everybody else, it's a meritocracy. Whoever's the best is going to play. Uh, JJ is a little bit behind because of the spring, but he's so talented. I could see him making that up in the fall. Yeah, there's the margin of error for him in this fall camp battle. Is it's a little bit less. I mean, I don't want to say it, it's probably a little bit more than just a little bit less now. I mean, he has a gap from missing spring. Like those are reps. That's chemistry. That's um, you know getting getting the calls down, getting used to snaps from. Uh, Olu Olu Timmy. So it's, there's a lot there still. Um, but JJ is the type of talent to where, like you said, on his talent alone, that's a gap you can close pretty quickly. Uh, we thought this was something that came up in our Thursday chat on the board. Like what, what does JJ have to do to play himself into that battle? I think he's already in it. He doesn't have to play himself into it. He's in it. Uh, but it's, it's the baseline things. It's Cade did a very good job of just running the offense last year. Cade executed what was asked of him. Uh, Cade's a winning football player. He doesn't get rattled. He doesn't get sacked. Uh, You know, he knows where the rush is coming from. You know, those are all the intangible things that if you're going to start over Cade McNamara, you have to, if you're not at that level, you have to be close with your other tools kind of bringing you up there. So like I said, I mean, it's, uh, this has been a, a ongoing storyline since even before the end of the season started. I mean, we had people calling for JJ, I think after the Rutgers game last year or whenever it was. So this is something that's, it's going to play out. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it, you know, continues to go into the regular season. And like you said, Chris, you're going to have to have both guys because someone's going to get banged up and miss a series, an important series. I think someone's going to have to put together a scoring drive or someone might miss a half of football or God forbid, miss a game. Um, you know, I think that where Michigan's coming from here is a position of strength and that, you know, you really do have two starting caliber guys. You just happen to have one that has a higher floor and one that has higher upside. And you let them battle it out and see what happens from there. I'll say this too, real quick, Clay. Uh, he's not a big kid put together right now, J.J. McCarthy. He's going to have to get some time in the gym, and I'm sure that he's been limited in what he can do in the weight room because of his shoulder. But, uh, man, I remember seeing Dylan McCaffrey and thinking, that kid better eat some Wheaties. Uh, I felt the same way when I saw JJ, man. Uh, there's no question about it. So, uh, but the other takeaways, Clay, Anthony, um, are these guys look great. Mozzie Smith is, is an absolute stud. Junior Colson, I can't believe he's a linebacker. I can't believe he moves like that, how much bigger he is, um, he's, how stronger he looks. Uh, he's just, I mean, this kid, sideline to sideline speed, too, in that body, I, I, it's, it's scary. So I can see why they say they feel like they've got a couple of Devin Bush types in there in the Kaiho Green and Junior Colson, except that they're taller. We're not saying these guys are the next Devin Bush are going to be top 10 picks, but we're not saying they're not either. So, uh, and the number of kids that were there, that was really was, was exciting too. Probably at least 20. There were walk-ons there. Max Bredesen was there. Um, some of the other offensive linemen, Greg Crippen was there. He played with a, a broken hand in the, in the spring. That's what people don't realize. You know, he's going to be the next center, in my opinion. Uh, Jim Harbaugh has had great things to say about him. And uh, Tristan Bounds was there looking pretty good. Uh, And everybody, guys, all of them, uh, didn't matter the position, was talking about Olu, Olu Watimi, who is just an absolute monster, they said. It's like watching uh, a pro out there. So exciting times for Michigan football. There's depth everywhere. Carson Barnhart, too, had a little bit of a back injury that was kind of hush-hush. So I think you're going to see that competition's not over yet. Tronte Jones uh, had a fantastic spring. I think Carson Barnhart... It's going to play himself right back into that competition too. So it's good to have that depth. Real quick before I weigh in on that, uh, do you think you could outbench JJ at this point? McCarthy? Yeah. 
Uh, well, let's, yeah. <laughs> let's not go there. I don't think he's benching right now. So, yeah, That's, let's get him. Or I guess, through. yeah, yeah, I'm if he was healthy. Off. Some old guy say he can out bench him. He's going to go in there and rip his labrum or something, and then it's going to be my fault. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay, yeah. So we'll, we won't <laughs> touch that there. one then. Um, okay. Speaking of guys like Mozzie, Trevor Keegan, guys that were in Cade's class, uh, I think it's cool that, that they went to that too. Like you're talking about no one wanted to talk about the quarterback battle, but the fact that this is a tight-knit – group and the fact that by all accounts JJ McCarthy and Cade McNamara had a good relationship last year it's it's obviously going to get heated it's going to be competitive that's the way it should be especially at a place like Michigan that has a rich tradition of having really good quarterbacks stacked up in that room but uh, I thought that was cool too and you're right I saw some of the pictures of Junior Colson I mean looks even more of a freak athlete than he was last year as a freshman looked a little raw but as EJ has talked about, that kid should have been a five star. I mean, he it was yeah. as fast as anybody. He returned a kickoff when EJ was at one of his games for a hundred yards for a touchdown, uh, and just flying, looking like a running back or a wide receiver out there. But he's a linebacker. He's big. He's ripped. I, I think he's going to have a, a huge season. Same with Mozzie Smith. I would love to see some of those uh, a Mozzie Smith Olu battle. You know, whether it's just in one on ones or team or whatever, uh, it'd be incredible. Yeah, it's like Godzilla versus one of those other monsters or something, you know, the old movie. So way before your time, fellas. And so, you know, going at it, it's just a, a battle of the monsters because these guys are so big and strong and uh, uh, just really good football players. Mozzie Smith doesn't like to talk. I don't know if you realize that, you know, even in his press conferences, you'd ask him about Jim Harbaugh. I don't care if he, if he went, that's, you know, his choice, whatever. You know, he, he's worried about himself and his football team. Uh, he was like that again when I talked to him, you know, and he said, hey, uh, he's not worried about the pass rush. He's not worried about anything. He thinks they got a good defense. So, uh, and I do too. Now, I don't know about the pass rush, guys. Uh, I'm sure somebody will step up, but I will say this. They've got a lot of really, really good football players on that side of the ball. Uh, and if they can find a couple of guys to step in there and find ways to get to the QB, I think this defense can be really, really good. So um, when I was starting the football preview, I, I told you in years past, fellas, picking five guys, you know, who, here are the five best players, and you get to number four, and like, God, who's number five, you know? Who's good enough to be number five? Now you're like, okay, how do you keep so-and-so out of the top five or out of the top ten? There's that. There are that many good players. So it's exciting. It's like Jim Harbaugh said, we're going to be scary good. I believe that. Uh, I really believe that if they stay focused, and by all accounts, guys, everything that I saw, they certainly are, this could be a really good football team. Yeah, I mean, the Vegas over-under that they set was nine and a half, and I'm like, yeah. I look at that schedule, and I'm going, okay, now we're talking, I'm I'm trying to think of the scenarios where they could get there. I mean, it's certainly possible, but the way that, that non-conference schedule sets up, the way that I really think the, the home schedule, will they have eight home games this year? Um, that alone is, I mean, you handle all your business there. I mean, you're already at eight wins. So I look at this team, you know, in a lot of areas, they are as deep as, as they've been since I've consciously like followed the program. And certainly since Jim Harbaugh has been there, I mean, offensive line, wide receiver, tight end, running back quarterback, you're fairly deep. Uh, I think they're deeper than we're really talking about, or that we have talked about on the defensive interior around Mozzie Smith. I think a lot of those guys have made the leap and will come up. Uh, if you want to argue the edge rushers are, are a question mark, sure. I think that depth at inside linebacker is probably uh, would still be a question mark to me. But other than that, you're young and athletic in the secondary. Um, the guys that are are green around the gills, so to speak, I think are just that much more athletically gifted than some of the guys that they're coming in and replacing. So it's it's exciting. And you know maybe they don't defend the Big Ten title this year, but even if they don't, I mean, they're – they're going to have a bunch of guys coming back next year and the year after that that are going to be impact players still. So for the first time in a while, you know, things were kind of teetering before last year on, all right, I don't know where this thing is headed in terms of the Jim Harbaugh experience, but it really does feel like, and, and that after seven years, we're heading into what year eight now, that this is where things were, are supposed to be and where they're meant to be. And, but if you don't walk out, you know, if it takes you another seven years to get to Indi Indianapolis, we're having a different conversation, but yep. I think they're well equipped to, um, you know, grab onto this power vacuum at the top of the big 10 as they've been in a while. And I've said, I said it this week too. I think they're better than Ohio state. I do. I truly believe that. So there you go. Yeah. And it's amazing with the last 12 months, Chris, we were writing that football preview 
a year ago and it wasn't as fun and it wasn't as you didn't know as much you know we were kind of and obviously that was impacted by not having a spring uh you know, or not having a uh you know much spring availability and with being in zoom and all that and coming off the season that they did that was only six games in addition to being so bad but now yeah, we what, sit what? here yeah go ahead yeah, I, they met every one of the goals. I was doing the goals from last year. You know, we do the preseason thing. Yep. I said, you know, get the culture back to where it needs to be. Uh, establish depth at every position, you know, uh, improve weekly. You know, these were the, it wasn't win the Big Ten, you know, and, but they did all those things and it led to a Big Ten title, guys. Culture is everything. I don't give a damn what anybody says. It's huge. So uh, it was fun to, fun to see that. The goals are a little bit higher this year, fellas. It's uh, repeat, beat the rivals you know, get back to the the college football playoffs. So we'll see what happens. It's a wrap. Definitely. Uh, join us at the Wolverine.com for $1 for just an entire year premium access there. Also that football preview magazine we're referencing. Uh, you can pre-order that at the Wolverine on demand.com. If you're a Wolverine.com subscriber, it's only $9. So get that right now. 160 pages, all glossy, uh, tons of analysis, exclusive interviews, features, all of that. So go and get that right now as well and thanks to our uh, sponsors manscaped and have a great memorial weekend everybody